Hey there YouTubers, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. I want to talk to you a little bit about the input box and how to use it. Um, I've had a lot of questions. Well, we've done a few things on message boxes, but not much on input boxes. So I want to really quickly go over that. I have here a spreadsheet open in Excel. In fact, I'm going to zoom in using control and using my scroll wheel. So I've zoomed in a little bit better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt F11 right off the bat. I'm going to create a new module which will contain my sub procedure. I'm going to call this procedure, how about my macro? Keep it simple. So, in this, I'm going to add an input box at the very beginning of the macro being run. So, let's say we have to set it up to a variable name. So, let's give it a name. How about a and how about answer? The answer to my question is whatever the input box gives me. So answer or whatever you put in here equals input box and when you put your parentheses it tells you all these different things you can put the optional ones are in brackets but you must have a prompt. So let's put um, in quotes, so let's put um, please enter date. Now I'm going to close it up. You can put a clothing parentheses, but you can also put a title if you put a comma. You can also put a title in quotes. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that for this first one. I'll just say date, please. Um, and all these other things are positional and, and not really used that much. But you can Google those if you want. Um, they just don't do much. So answer equals input box. Please enter date, date, please. Let's see what that looks like off the bat. Hit F8, F8, and F8. You saw that answer is equal to empty until we fill it with something. So let's enter a date. How about 1-1-2013? One, one, I'm going to click OK. And we're still in debug mode, so we can take a peek at what answer equals now. Answer equals 1-1-2013. One, one, so now we can do stuff with that. We could say if answer, um, we could say if is date, answer is true, then. So basically, this is date is something to verify whether this is a date or not. So if that's a date, then fine. But otherwise, um, we may want to not do something with that. So let's let's compare using that. Let's see. If that is a date, I'm gonna hit F eight. So okay, so that is a date, one one two thousand thirteen. It's not like a word that cannot be calculated upon. So let's get the starting date and the ending date of the month. So our starting date equals Let's take the C date, which is a conversion of the date of our answer. And that it really needs to be the first of the month. Uh, we'll assume that they put the first of the month. Well, there's ways to calculate that out. But C date of that takes away the quotations and is strictly a date now instead of a text. So, and then the end date, or the end of that month, equals, and we can use the application dot worksheet function dot e o month just like using a regular worksheet function only you have to type in these two little words application dot worksheet function dot e o month parentheses now you have to know the argument so you might want to play around with that function with um, a worksheet but basically I'm gonna say I want the end of the month of whatever date is in this variable answer which we know is one one two thousand thirteen so, and then how many months forward? Well, I want zero months forward. And you'll see that that'll actually yield a serial number. So we might want to do a C date of that. See, there's a serial number, 41305. If we do a C date to convert that, we will have an actual date, 131 2013. So we have this start date and end date. Fantastic. So, go ahead and move forward. Let's just cheat and use the brackets. We're going to say B1 equals start date and how about B2 equals end date. 
So we'll see right there. There's the start date. There's the end date. Okay. So now we have name, address, and phone number that's going to be requested. So let's do something other than answer. How about answer number two? Answer two is this input box. This is um, and your name, please. Name, please. So answer two, and we'll get to if they click cancel as well, because that happens. So. Um, We'll say that B3 equals answer 2. We'll just copy that and control V to paste. And we'll do a third one. This is for your address. Okay. And of course, the phone number. And there's lots of ways you can manipulate that too if you feel like it. Okay, let's see how that. I'm going to take this arrow and go back up here a little bit. Let's see the next input box. And your name, please. I hit Daniel. If you hit F8, I'll put my name in there. Okay. <coughs> F8, and your address, please. 123 Test Drive. Hit OK. And that's going to go in cell B4. Hit F8. And your phone, please. Sure thing. 123456-7890. Yeah, that looks right. Hit OK. All right. And so that's going to go into B5. Okay. Now, what about if somebody hits cancel? Take all these and do a little right align there. So what if somebody clicks cancel? Let's hit Alt F8. And we want to run our macro all the way through. Please enter a date. I'm going to hit, uh, I'll still do a date. 6, 1, 2013. And your name, please. Dan. And your address, please. Well, I'm going to hit cancel. Cancel. Okay, so you may want to not just make these blank, you may want to just blank everything out and tell the user, hey, uh, if you're not going to answer all these questions, then you've, or the user canceled the blah, 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 whatever. So I'm going to put something, I'm going to put a little place marker here at the ending say ending with a colon there and I'm going to say if answer 2 equals blank because when we hit a cancel you'll see that it is blank then we'll do a message box user cancelled or something like that. I don't know, it sounds computerish. Go to ending. And when we say go to and then put something, then we're pointing to this ending with the colon there. And if. And you could do that with the other ones too. So that if somebody canceled, it would cancel everything essentially. So this is answer three, and answer four. <laughs> and not only that, but uh, you go to a special ending if you wanted to. All right, I'm not going to get into too much, but there, you know, some people might want to blank out B1 through B5 if they decided to cancel. So I will show you how to do that. Let's just say, I guess we can just do it on each of these. Um, range B1 through B5 in parentheses dot clear contents. I'm going to copy that. So every time they get this message box that the user canceled, 
and it's also going to clear the contents before hopping over to the ending here. Let's try that. Let's hit save, and I'm going to hit Alt F8, and we'll run the one called My Macro. Please enter the date. I sure will. How about July 1st? And your name, please? Billy. Your address? I'm not giving my address. Cancel. User. Canceled action. And this is all going to blank out. Oh boy. Now I've done it. Now, just for good measure, we're also going to insert a shape. We're going to go to this one here. And we will make it nice and big. And we'll put something shiny right there. And we're going to say, press me. We'll center it up. In fact, control A to select all. Let's go a little bigger here. Press me. There we go. So, right click on that button and assign a macro. Well, we only have one to assign in our list. My macro. That way, now when I click this button, I can run my macro. Sweet. So, now I'll enter a date and I'm going to cancel somewhere in there. User cancel the action. Oh no, I have to start over. Anyway, that's how to use the input box. Very simple, very straightforward. Oh, and when you do that, do note that the title that we did goes here, and of course, whatever your prompt is here. So anyway, thank you for watching. God bless. Bye.